there we go. Now we're all set. Sweet. Whoop. Hello, hello, friends. I know that no one has quite joined quite yet. Sorry for the shaky camera work. <laughs> I'm working on it. There we go. Okay, let's make sure that we're all set and ready. Perfect. So if you are just tuning in, hello, hello, happy Thursday, friends. My name is Cassie, and I'll be guiding today's practice. So if you would like, um, maybe grab some water, always good. Today's flow is gonna be maybe not super intense, but definitely working different aspects that might, um, you know, want, we might want some water, always good. Um, some uh, thing you, a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Some things you also might want are either some yoga blocks if you have them. I always like to have two around just to make life a little bit easier, make my arms a little bit longer. Um, and if you don't have yoga blocks, that's totally fine. Maybe some hardcover books like a dictionary um, is always nice to have. Or maybe um, just like a really sturdy rectangular box, like maybe like a cat food box, something like that. Or um, even just a chair or sofa, just to help us balance a little bit um, as we are flowing today. Um, some things that also might be pretty comfortable is a blanket or two, just to make things a little bit more cushy, especially if you're practicing on a more hard surface like tile or uh, hardwood floor. And then the last thing that we'll need today, and probably the most important, is a strap. And if you don't have a yoga strap, that's totally fine. It doesn't have to look like this at all. If you have maybe like a scarf, or a tie, or a belt, or a leash, um, or a rope, something like that. Um, again, just to make our arms a little bit longer and a little bit easier to start to work here into the shoulders. Um, yeah. So today's class is going to be focusing a lot more on um, shoulder mobility, especially what we're going to be focusing on is shoulder flexion where we're reaching our arms up above our heads. Um, typically, a lot of us, this is pretty uh, tricky in the shoulders, um, and we start to kind of like flare out through the rib cage to try and compensate to bring our arms up by our ears. And so when we do that, we're tilting our pelvis forward and we're flaring out here in the rib cage. Um, what we're going to be working on today is trying to knit that all back together so that when we do reach up, we're not rocking forwards here. Um, I figured since for earth treks we either climb, maybe we lift heavy weights above our head, or maybe we practice yoga, this is a really important um, concept and idea just to work a little bit more safely here into the shoulders. Um, something that I also wanted to talk about is in yoga classes we hear a lot where you have to like squeeze your shoulder blades together and then drag that sensation down towards your hips or try and work that sensation down along the back. When we're here up overhead it is actually totally fine to have your shoulders by your ears but we're still squeezing the shoulders towards each other. Um, we're trying to create stability here in the shoulder where a lot of things are moving around. Um, and so you won't necessarily hear me say to squeeze and then drag when our arms are up above like this. Um, when our arms are here in like a cactus shape, that's completely different. Um, and we're working a different area. Um, so that's just to kind of let you know about what's going on. <laughs> Sweet. So for today's class, um, we're actually going to be starting off with a little drill before we actually like center in our body just so that we're starting to remind the shoulders and the body uh, to kind of how to move and how we want to train that movement for today's class. Um, and again, this is super great for people who either practice yoga, climb, lift heavy things, um, weights, um, or really just anyone who's looking to try and get more mobility here in this range. So cool. We'll start off by grabbing a blanket or maybe a towel um, and sitting on the rolled edge of it. That way, when we're sitting on it, it almost feels like we're about to tip forwards with our tailbone here. So that we're here, 
if that makes sense. Um, I think a better way to visualize it is that if you imagine that this is your pelvis, we want to slightly tip forwards here so that we're already in an anterior pelvic tilt and it's a little bit more comfortable to sit like this if, um, yeah, if that makes sense. So we'll start off by grabbing our strap for our initial drill. And again, you can use a scarf, tie, belt, leash, really anything where it's not super stretchy, but pretty firm. And then we'll clasp our strap so that the palms face down and our thumbs wrap underneath. And then maybe my hands are about two and a half to three feet apart. I'm pretty short though, so just a little bit wider than shoulder distance for sure. And then kind of pull apart on your strap so that you're slightly engaged in the outer parts of your arms here but then rotate your palms so that you're facing them so that we're slightly externally rotated in the shoulders and it's almost like we're trying to hug our elbows towards each other. That way we're really lit up here in the outer part of the shoulder but also a little bit on the inside here as well. Awesome. So then I was talking a little bit about that rib cage flare and how we want to knit our rib cage towards our hips. So I'm just gonna rotate to the side so that we can also all kind of see. And then, there we go. So what I'm going to do is shoo, kind of like, almost like I'm about to be sucker punched in the stomach or just like a really big exhale. I'm really turning on my core and trying to knit the low ribs towards my hip bones. And I don't necessarily have to be rounded over by any means, just being really active here in the core. So we're here, we're hugging, we're slightly pulling apart on our strap, but slightly hugging our elbows towards each other. And then take a glance down at both elbows. See that there's a micro bend. And here I'm really exaggerating that micro bend, but this is honestly really good because we don't want to blast out through the shoulders or the elbows as we start to raise them up overhead because um, we really want to work into the musculature of our body versus the joints. So when we're here, my, my core is super tight. Maybe even a loud exhale just to make it a little fun and dramatic. And on my inhale, I'll start to reach my arms up overhead. And here, once I start to feel that I want to flare out, I'm going to come back towards where I can feel that right before. And then I'll squeeze my shoulders together onto my back, still keeping everything the same. Take a deep breath into this shape. Exhale, let it go. Maybe you'll see that with each inhale and exhale, it's a little bit easier to reach back a little bit. Taking one more deep breath. Exhale, let it go. Let your arms go back into your lap. Maybe kind of roll out the shoulders a little bit. Maybe roll out the neck from side to side. Again, just starting to warm up the shoulders and teaching the shoulders where they want to be. So. We'll try that one more time and I'm going to tilt a little bit more this way so it's a little bit of a different angle. And if you feel like you're really open in your shoulders and that was really easy for you, instead of being three feet apart with your hands, maybe shorten it to maybe two or even one foot apart. I'm not super open in my shoulders quite yet. I haven't warmed them up super much a lot today, so I'm going to keep myself at about two and a half to three feet. If you need to widen it even more, that's totally fine. So again, Spiral your palms towards each other, pull apart from your strap, micro bend in the elbows, super important, and then shoo, really turn on your core. Keep that same integration of pulling out but hugging in, and then slowly start to reach your arms up by your ears. And again, once you feel like you can't go anymore or that your ribs want to poke out, bring it back just a little bit. Keep that same integration with your arms and your elbows and then squeeze your shoulders towards each other. And they can be up by your ears, that's totally fine. We're not necessarily trying to drag them down our back as we're here in our overhead extent flexion. Keep breathing into this shape. Maybe just maybe each time it gets a little bit easier to kind of reach the arms back behind. Taking one more deep breath. Exhale, release down into your lap. We'll do that one more time. So again, maybe up to you. If you felt like that second time was a little bit easier and you were able to reach back a little bit more, maybe shorten the space in between your hands. Keep it where it is if, that's to if that felt really good. I'm gonna keep my hands where they were, but you don't have to look like me by any means. So we'll come back. So we're pulling out on our strap, facing our palms towards each other, micro bend in the elbows, hugging our elbows towards each, 
towards each other so that we're active here on the outer edges but also on the inner parts here so so we're trying to keep our shoulder nice and stable there we go and then again super super tight core knitting our ribs towards the front of our hips and then if you like really want to like exaggerate it you can think about tilting your tailbone under and then on your inhale start to reach your shoulders up or reach your hands up keeping that same integration nothing moves beneath the shoulders squeezing the shoulders towards each other onto our back Taking one more deep breath. On your third exhale, you can release your hands back into your lap. If you're using your strap or your scarf, you can scooch it off to the side. Um, and we might use it in a little bit, but not for a while. So come to just a comfortable seat. Maybe if you were already seated and you felt really comfortable there, feel free to stay there but maybe we'll place our hands in our laps, really centering our body as we kind of started to warm up already, but now we just kind of wanna come into our own, come into our mat. And so maybe it might feel nice to kind of start to roll out the neck, noticing how the shoulders are feeling after that little drill. Maybe tilting the neck from side to side. Maybe if you roll your neck on towards the back of your back, so this back part up here, try and keep your teeth closed so that we're really stretching out the front of the throat versus rocking into the crunchy part of our neck. If it does crunch, that is okay. Once you feel like you got out some of the wiggles, maybe place your head on top of your shoulders Maybe hands are in your lap or really wherever they feel comfortable. Start to close down your eyes or maybe gaze at something softly in front of you. And really start to breathe. Really noticing how each breath feels. Almost like a slight breeze in the air. As you start to settle into your mat and into your body, start to add a gentle ujjayi breath. And how we do that is slightly constricting the back of the throat on each inhale and exhale. And it's almost kind of like that same sensation as fogging a mirror or whispering to a friend. almost takes on this oceanic quality so that with each inhale and exhale it kind of feels and sounds like waves are crashing on a beach. And we'll be keeping this tool with us throughout the whole entire practice until the end. And it helps warm the body, keep tempo in class, and also just helps oxygenate the blood and really let everything flow within us. Start to take in three deep, deep breaths, really allowing your low belly to fill and expand. On your third inhale, you can start to blink open your eyes, maybe gaze around the room to kind of reorient yourself to the space that we're in, and just the environment in general. And when you're ready, we'll roll over our hands and knees, coming into a tabletop shape where our hands are stacked underneath our shoulders and our knees are stacked underneath our hips. 
If you like some added comfort for your knees, maybe grab a blanket to place underneath, especially if you're on a more hard surface. Excuse me. We'll start off by building our foundation. So press your weight into your finger pads on both the hands, then press your weight into your base knuckles where your fingers meet the palms so that it feels like you're trying to like make a fist but the ground won't let you and then you're pushing forward. This helps alleviate some pressure on the wrists so that we're not dumping here into the back part. And then bend your elbows out to the side and then wrap them underneath so that the eye of your elbow, the place where it bends, is pointing forward and we're hugging a block almost in between our elbows. And just that sensation so that we're really externally rotating here at the shoulders. On your next inhale, start to drop your belly, squeeze your shoulder blades together onto your back, maybe gaze up towards the sky. Exhale, start to round through your back, really push the ground away, creating space in between your shoulders. Let your head hang heavy. Inhale, drop your belly, squeeze your shoulder blades together. Exhale, round through your back. Inhale, drop your belly, swim your heart through your chest. Exhale, round through your back. For the next five to 10 rounds of breath, add any organic movement into this shape. So maybe dipping the hips from side to side, maybe rocking back into child's pose. Maybe one of those exaggerated shapes like that arching or rounding feels really nice. Maybe working to the wrists a little bit, really whatever feels good in your body. Just noticing how it's feeling, what might feel a little bit tight, what feels really open. Once you're ready, we'll come back to that neutral tabletop. So the same shape, just with our back flat, keeping that same foundation with our fingertips and elbows. So hugging them towards each other and then scoop through the low belly. So it feels like you're trying to draw your belly button in and up towards your heart so that it's nice and active here in your core. And that helps protect the low back. Slide your right toes out long back behind you, keeping them on the ground at first. Maybe start to push back into that back heel a little bit or even adding a little bit of a pulse. I always like to check in with the lower half of the body just to notice what's going on and notice if maybe we're a little bit more tight than we thought we were. And if that feels really good, feel free to stay there or maybe hug, or sorry, hover your right foot up off the ground, maybe two inches or even up to hip height. And then take a peek back at your right toes and see that they're pointed down towards the ground, but be really active in that back leg, like you're trying to press the wall behind you away, or even the tree or really anything behind you so that you're nice and active. Maybe just maybe, if it feels okay, maybe float onto your left fingertips or even reach your left arm out long in front of you, thumb points up to that sky, or up towards the sky. So that same idea where we're trying to kind of rotate our palms inwards and then using that shoulder to lift up, just like we did with the strap at the beginning. Keep your core nice and tight. So again, not trying to like make a U with our body, but stay nice and tight here in our core. And then start to pulse the left hand so that we're not just bending up the elbow, but the whole arm is moving. So again, we're trying to teach our body how to move here. Pause, and then pulse the back leg so that you're using the booty to lift that right heel. And pause, and then start to pulse both at the same time. Not super fast, so that you can really focus on using those muscles, the shoulder and the booty, to lift each limb. Take in one more deep breath. On your next inhale, really extend out, put daylight in between your fingertips and toes. Exhale, start to round through your back, crunching your knee towards your elbow, meeting underneath your belly button. Inhale, really extend out, take up space. Exhale, round through your back, crunching your knee towards your elbow. They don't have to touch. Inhale, reach out, really take up space. Allow yourself to. Exhale, last one. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, release your hand and knee back down to the earth. And then this time, pivot on your right knee so that your right toes come up off the side of your mat and your right toes curl under. 
reach your left foot out long so that your left foot is in line with your right knee and right hand roughly and your left foot is planted on the earth so that you can really push into the pinky edge of your left foot inhale reach your left arm up towards the sky try and put space in between your right ear and your right shoulder and then maybe just maybe face your left palm down towards the ground and then reach your left arm by your left ear really press into the pinky edge of your left foot and see if you can grow from there reaching your left fingertips away see if you can like almost be in between two panes of glass kind of like you're a spy and you're like sneaking through and you have to kind of so that way we're not reaching forwards or reaching behind ourselves but staying in line taking one more deep breath and as you exhale release your left knee and left hand down to the ground any counter movements maybe working into the wrists a little bit maybe shaking them out maybe a child's pose is calling your name really anything or grab a drink of water awesome once you're ready we'll try out try it out on the other side so come back to your tabletop shape hands stacked underneath shoulders knees stacked underneath hips Keep that same foundation and the fingertips and the elbows hugging towards each other. Scoop through your low belly. Try and draw your belly button in and up towards your heart so that your core is nice and turned on and super active. This time, slide your left toes out long back behind you, keeping them on the ground at first, maybe pressing into that back heel so that we're starting to open up the backs of the legs a little bit. Maybe adding a pulse. Again, just checking in with the left side body. Maybe just maybe lift your left heel up to about hip height or even just a couple inches off the ground. Take a quick peek at your left toes and see that they're pointing down towards the ground. And then be active in that back foot, using your booty and the backs of your legs to press away. Maybe just maybe get light on your right fingertips or maybe reach your right arm by your right ear, thumb points up to the sky. Keep your back or keep your core nice and turned on and then start to pulse your right arm. Again, using the shoulder, we're kind of teaching the shoulder to, excuse me, to work in this fashion. Slowly working on our mobility and the shoulder joint just in general. Pause, start to pulse the back heel. Again, using the booty to lift that back heel pause and then start to pulse both again maybe going a little bit slower so that we're really focusing on which muscles are doing the action again we're not bending our whole body and dumping into the low back we're trying to stay super tight in our core and just using those little muscles taking one more deep breath inhale really extend out Put daylight in between your fingertips and toes. Exhale, start to round through your shoulders, scoop through your low belly, reaching your knee towards your elbow. Inhale, extend out long, really take up space. Exhale, round through your shoulders, reaching your knee towards your elbow underneath your belly button. Inhale, last one, take up space, allow yourself to. Exhale, round and crunch your belly button towards your spine. Inhale, reach out. Exhale, release your hand and knee back down on the earth. Pivot on your left knee. Kickstand your left toes over to the side, curling all left toes under. And then reach your right foot so that it's in line with your left knee. And your right foot is planted on the ground. Inhale, reach your right arm up towards the sky. Press into the pinky edge of your right foot. And then maybe reach your right arm by your right ear as your palm faces the earth. Think about trying to rotate your heart just a little bit up, putting space in between your left ear and left shoulder. Taking one more deep breath. As you exhale, release your hand and knee back down to the earth. And again, any counter movements that your body is calling for, maybe rolling out the wrists a little bit, or maybe that arching and rounding of the spine, 
or maybe rocking back into child's pose. On your next exhale, we'll come back to that neutral tabletop. Again, same shape, just with our back flat. And then this time, we're gonna do one more little drill. So it's definitely gonna be a little bit different than the stereotypical like puppy pose that we might see in class. And if you've never heard that term before, that's totally okay, you don't need to know what it is. But we'll start off again on tabletop. And I'm gonna scoot back just a little bit so that my hands stay on my mat. So we'll start off in tabletop, so my hands are stacked underneath my shoulders, same foundation, and scooping my low belly in towards, um, or up into my heart. So I'm gonna turn sideways at first. So I'm really trying to scoop through my low belly, being super tight here. And then I'm going to raise up onto my fingertips and walk both hands forward, maybe about a hand print. I'm hugging my elbows towards each other, and I'm still keeping that same foundation from tabletop. And instead of dumping back and just trying to press the heart down towards the ground, we're going to be a little bit more active here. So I'm raised up onto my fingertips, still hugging my elbows towards each other, and slowly walking hand print by hand print forwards. And this way we're strengthening the wrists, which is super awesome for climbing and yoga in general, but also really working into the feeling of um, the, the top part of the shoulder. And so I'm not tilting my tailbone up towards the sky, I'm still pointing it at long back behind me, keeping my core super engaged, maybe slowly walking my fingertips forward and forward and forward. And it's definitely gonna be a little bit harder than your average or normal puppy pose shape, just cause we're a lot more active here. Taking one more deep breath. And as you exhale, Start to walk, plant your palms back down on the ground and then start to walk your hands back underneath your shoulders. Woo! <laughs> Sweet. So curl all 10 toes under and lift your hips up and back to downward facing dog. If you were using that um, towel or blanket, you can scooch it off to the side. And then maybe pedal out your heels, so bending and straightening one knee at a time maybe pivoting on your toes and rainbowing your hips from side to side to work a little bit more into your side body. Maybe even lifting one arm up, just to really notice and play around with this shape. Keep digging your fingertips down and forward, hugging your elbows towards each other. And then lift up super high onto the balls of your feet so that you're reaching your heels up and then bend your knees tilting your tailbone up towards the sky. See if you can press your shoulders down towards your thighs a little bit more, keeping your back nice and flat. On your next inhale, glance between your hands. Exhale, walk your toes up towards the top of the mat. Inhale, lift your body halfway, spine and gaze long, kissing your shoulder blades together. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees super deep so that you can stack or rest your chest on your thighs and then slowly rise to standing, vertebra by vertebra. Inhale, swipe your fingertips up towards the sky, growing nice and tall, maybe reaching pinkies, fingertips, or, out, or palms to touch. Exhale, clear your hands through heart. Inhale, swipe your fingertips up towards the sky, grow nice and tall. Exhale, cactus one time. This is where we're going to squeeze our shoulder blades together, but then drag that sensation down because we're really trying to open up the front of the chest, not work our arms past our uh, ears. Inhale, reach your fingertips up towards the sky. Exhale, clear your hands through heart. Inhale, swipe up nice and big. Exhale, swan dive forward, reach your heart forward, fold over your hips. Inhale, lift your body halfway, kiss your shoulder blades together. Exhale, fold forward. Plant your hands down on the ground, step back to plank, top of a push-up. If you want, you can always release your knees down here in this shape, that's totally fine. And no matter if your knees are lifted or not, keep that same foundation, hugging your elbows towards each other. And then this time, be really active. So here with 
the knees down or lifted instead of just kind of dumping into my shoulders I really want to press the ground away so I'm really trying to create space in between my shoulders almost lifting the back of my heart up stay here for one more deep breath on your next inhale glance over the top of your mat hinge your shoulders past your wrists maybe two to three inches exhale lower all the way down to the ground super slow slower than you want release the tops of your toes so that the shoelace side presses down and press down so much so that your kneecaps pop up press your hips into the earth so that you're slightly toning your booty so it's kind of like a firm mango but not super tight like a raisin squeeze your shoulder blades together inhale peel your heart up maybe pressing 10 to 20 percent of your weight into your hands exhale release maybe for the second one you'd like to press a little bit more weight into your hands totally up to you keep that same foundation pressing down with your toes and hips inhale peel your heart up exhale release for this third one maybe try with no hands totally up to you inhale peel your heart up exhale release this time this is gonna be super fun <laughs> you're gonna reach your arms forward kind of like Superman we're still keeping that same foundation of pressing our toes and hips down into the earth and our kneecaps are lifted we're using our booty just a little bit so that it's toned but again more of a firm mango not like death gripping like a raisin squeeze your shoulder blades towards each other not down your back though just towards each other inhale peel your heart up arms by your ears and then start to pulse yeah yeah <laughs> taking one more deep breath exhale release Whew. Whew. maybe kind of shul shimmy shul <laughs> maybe shoulder shimmy just to kind of relax hmm. maybe rock the hips from side to side and we'll do that one more time When you're ready, press your toes and hips down into the ground. Turn on your core again so that we're very similar, so that we're not flaring out for the rib cage, but keeping everything nice and tight. Inhale, peel your heart up, and then start to pulse your right hand so that we're really working the right shoulder. Pause, pulse the left. Pause, and now pulse both. exhale release <sighs> oh that was fun <laughs> so then walk your hands back underneath your shoulders curl all ten toes under be super active in your back leg so again your knees should be lifted and you're pressing out through your heels turn on your core and either press up through tabletop or plank but we'll all meet in downward facing dog Again, maybe pedaling out your heels, maybe rainbowing your hips from side to side, really just working into this shape, noticing how it feels. And that kind of like full push up to either Cobra, where we lifted our chest up off the ground, and then meeting in downward facing dog, that three piece movement is what we call a vinyasa. So in the future, if you would like to take on a different shape of a vinyasa, please feel free to do that and honor your body. Also, please feel free to skip it. I'm gonna grab some water real quick. <laughs> Beautiful. Keep pedaling out through your heels, maybe rainbowing your hips from side to side. There we go. Whoop. Bring your big toes to touch. And on your next inhale, raise your right leg up towards the sky, growing nice and tall. Exhale, start to round through your shoulders, scoop through your low belly, start to drag your knee towards your nose like you're moving through honey. And you're really trying to scoop your belly button towards your spine, pushing the ground away. Inhale, kick your right leg out long back behind you. Exhale, round forward, scoop through your low belly, right knee, right elbow this time. Inhale, kick it out long back behind you. Exhale, round scoop, reach your right knee towards your left elbow. Inhale, kick it out long back behind you. Exhale, plant or walk your right foot in between your hands. 
when I glance down at my feet, I'm on train tracks, not a balance beam, so that my feet are about hips distance apart. Press into both feet, and then maybe if you have like a chair or a sofa or the wall or maybe some blocks, it might feel nice to kind of move back and forth, starting to work into the hips and the backs of the legs a little bit. So here, if you don't have that and you're on your fingertips, that's totally fine. Maybe start to press your hips forward so that you're working into the front part of the legs. And then maybe gently reach your tailbone up behind you, keeping your hips square. So trying to think about swiping your right hip crease back. And with each exhale, maybe bending into it. Inhale, lifting up the hips. Exhale, bending. If you would like to work this a little bit more, especially into the backs of the legs when you lift your hips, maybe lift your toes up with you so that you're flexing your foot. Inhale, breathe deep. Exhale, lift the toes. Replant your right foot. Sack your right knee on top of your ankle. Press into both feet. Inhale, rise to high crescent lunge. Whoop, on the right side. Inhale, grow nice and tall. Exhale, cactus the elbows. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Drag them down. And then bend your back knee, hovering it off the ground, maybe two to three inches. Inhale, reach, grow tall. Exhale, cactus and hover. Inhale, reach. Exhale, cactus and hover. Inhale, reach. This time, clasp your hands behind your back. So we can either grab opposite wrists, opposite forearms, or even opposite elbows, and then gently squeeze our shoulder blades together. Or maybe make a fist behind our low back. Whatever feels more comfortable for you. Think about squeezing your shoulder blades together, lifting your heart up. And then on your next exhale, start to hinge forward, reaching your right shoulder towards your right knee. Take in one more deep breath. And as you exhale, start to think about punching the wall or the floor behind you with your hands. Gently release. Inhale, reach your fingertips up. Exhale, hinge forward, airplane your arms out long back behind you. Palms face the earth. Stay here in this 45 degree tilt. Inhale, reach your arms up by your ears. Thumbs point by your ears. Exhale, reach it out long back behind. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, last one, airplane. <sighs> Inhale, rise to high crescent lunge. And then this time, reach both arms forward. Cross your right arm on top of your left so you can still bend that left elbow. Bend both elbows so that your palms face your face and then press the backs of your hands together or maybe go for a double wrap. If this feels already pretty uncomfortable, we can bring it back here and then think about trying to swipe your right shoulder back into its hip socket or into its shoulder socket kind of that idea awesome and then start to shift your weight forward into that right foot maybe slide your left toes whoo to meet your right and then slide them out long back behind you Oops, slide them forwards slide them back reach one more time forwards and back Release your arms, inhale, reach your fingertips up. Exhale, frame your front foot. Move through your vinyasa or skip it. I'm gonna move through full push-up to cobra. Pressing down through my toes and my hips. Inhale, peel up. Exhale, release. Press up to downward facing dog. Gonna grab some water real fast. Awesome. Bring your big toes to touch. And on your next inhale, raise your left leg up towards the sky. Exhale, start to round through your shoulders, scoop your low belly, reach your left knee towards your nose. Inhale, kick it out long back behind you. Exhale, shift forward into plank, left knee, left elbow. Inhale, kick it out long back behind you. Exhale, shift forward, rounding through your shoulders, scoop through your low belly, left knee, right elbow. Inhale, kick it back. 
exhale point your left foot or walk it up there in between your hands and again maybe grab your blocks to make your arms a little bit longer or use a chair or a sofa or if you don't have any sprinkle your fingertips down on the ground and slowly start to shift your hips back and forwards so if lifting with each inhale exhale pressing forwards when you're pressing forwards, think about trying to swim your heart through your chest, gently squeezing your shoulder blades together. Inhale, lift. Exhale, press. Again, maybe lift up on your left heel, reaching your toes up towards the sky to really deepen the sensation in the back part of the leg. Taking about one more round. plant that left foot. Again, glance down to see that you're on train tracks, not on a balance beam. Press into both feet, inhale, rise to high crescent lunge on the left side. So when we're here, take a peek down at your left knee, see that it's stacked roughly on top of that ankle. Think about trying to swipe your left hip crease back as you push your right hip crease forward. It should feel like you're trying to drag your left heel towards your right big toe. On your inhale, grow nice and tall. Exhale, cactus and hover two to three inches off the ground. Inhale, reach. Exhale, cactus. Inhale, reach. Exhale, cactus. About one more. Inhale, reach your fingertips up towards the sky. And then this time, clasp your hands behind your back. And if you made a fist or maybe clasp them either wrists or forearms or elbows, try and alternate which arm is on top so that we're balancing both sides. If you clasp opposite wrists, forearms or elbows, squeeze your shoulder blades together. And if you're making a fist, think about trying to squeeze your shoulder blades together and reach your chest up towards the sky. Inhale, punch whatever's behind you. Exhale, start to hinge forward, reaching your left shoulder towards the inside of your left knee. Taking one more deep breath. And as you exhale, think about punching your hands behind you as you lift your chest up towards the sky. Gently release. Inhale, reach your fingertips up by your ears. Exhale, air, hinge forward, airplane your arms out behind you. Palms face the earth. Stay here in this 45 degree tilt. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, airplane. Inhale, reach. Exhale, airplane. Last one. Inhale, reach. Exhale. Inhale, rise to high crescent lunge. And then, whoo, that front leg. <laughs> reach both arms out long in front of you. This time, crossing the left arm on top of the right. Bend both elbows and then press the backs of the hands together or maybe go for that double wrap. Again, if this is pretty tricky, just cross the left arm in front of you and then hug it in, trying to bring the left shoulder back towards the left socket. There we go. So kind of like one of these. And then start to shift that weight into that left leg and slide your right toes to move your left. Rebend if you were like me and needed a little break. Slide your right toes back and forward and back and forward last one inhale reach gently uncross your arms inhale reach your arms up to the sky grow tall exhale frame your front foot move through your vinyasa or skip it this time i'll change it up a little bit but we'll all meet in downward facing dog on your next inhale, glance between your hands. Exhale, walk or jump your toes to the top of the mat. Inhale, lift your body halfway, pressing your hands into your shins or thighs. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Exhale, fold forward. Bend your knees super deep, resting your chest on your thighs. Inhale, rise to standing, bringing your arms up with you this time. Maybe touching pinkies, fingertips, or palms up at the top. Exhale, clear your hands through heart. Inhale, reach up towards the sky. 
Exhale, cactus one time. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Drag them down. Inhale, reach your fingertips up. Exhale, clear your hands through heart. Maybe shake out your legs a little bit and grab some water. When you're ready, swipe your fingertips up towards the sky. Exhale, swan dive. Swipe them by your sides, reaching your chest forward, forward fold. Inhale, lift your heart halfway, pressing your hands into your shins or thighs. Exhale, fold forward. Plant your hands on the ground. Step your feet back to plank, top of a push-up. Sweet. So again, I'm still hugging my elbows towards each other, but I'm puffing up through the back of my heart trying to kind of really reach the space in between my shoulder blades up, really pressing the ground away. Taking one more deep breath here. Exhale, move through your vinyasa. So maybe that little halfway push up to upward dog, or maybe that full push up to cobra. But regardless, we'll meet in downward facing dog. Pedaling out the heels, maybe pivoting on your toes and rainbowing your feet from side to side, as well as your hips. Bring your big toes to touch. And on your next inhale, raise your right leg up towards the sky. Exhale, shift forward, draw your knee towards your nose. And then this time, bring your right knee to your right wrist. Stay here for the inhale. Exhale, bump it up to your elbow. Stay here for the inhale. Bump it up to your armpit, you got it. Stay here for the one more deep breath. Exhale, kick it out long back behind you. Inhale, grow nice and tall. Maybe bend your knees, stack your hips on top of each other, on top of each other, and open up your hips to the right, kind of like a dog peeing on a fire hydrant. On your next inhale, reach your right leg back out long behind you. Exhale, plant or walk your right foot in between your hands. Oh. Now, maybe keep your left hand down on the ground if you feel like this is pretty easy for you to have both hands by your foot. If not, maybe grab a block or a box or a book or really anything to place underneath your left hand. On your next inhale, reach your right arm up towards the sky. Keep pressing your right chin forward and think about trying to still swipe your right hip crease back. And then start to make really big circles with that right arm going one way and then the other. On your next exhale, release your right hand down to the ground, press into both feet, inhale, rise to high crescent lunge on the right side. Again, drag your right heel towards your left big toe so that you're swiping your right hip crease back. On your inhale, grow nice and tall. Exhale, cactus and hover one time. Inhale, reach. Exhale, airplane, reach your arms out long back behind you. Stay here on this 45 degree tilt. Inhale, reach your arms up. Exhale, airplane. Inhale, reach. Thinking about what we worked on at the beginning of class. Exhale, reach behind you. Inhale, reach up. Stay here with your arms up by your ears. Start to shift your weight forwards and your right foot, and then maybe walk a little bit, or maybe float your left toes up off the ground, maybe two to three inches, or even up about hip height. And just like at the beginning, take a peek at your left toes and see that they're pointed down to the ground. Turn your core on super tight. Take in one deep breath. Super deep bend into your right knee. Reach your left foot out long back behind you. Inhale, reach up to high crescent lunge. Exhale, pivot your left heel down to the ground. Pivot on your right heel. So all toes point the same direction. And hinge over your hips. Wide-legged forward fold. Whoo! <laughs> Turn your toes in just a little bit or have your feet be perfectly parallel. That way we're working more into the backs of the legs and the inner parts of the legs. And if you hyperextend, have a slight bend in your knees so that, excuse me, so that we're really working the muscles versus the joints.
Taking one more deep breath. As you exhale, gently release your fingertips down towards the ground if you had lifted them. Inhale, lift your heart halfway, shine it forwards. Exhale, fold forward. And then start to walk your fingertips towards your left foot so that we're coming here into this crescent lunge on the left side. But instead of showing you my booty, I'm gonna flip around and talk to you. <laughs> awesome. So here, keep your hands framing your front foot. Again, if this is a little bit easier to have your hands flat on the ground, stay there, feel free, or maybe play something to put underneath your right hand to make this a little bit more accessible. Think about swiping your left hip crease back, but push your left shin forwards. On your inhale, reach your left arm up to the sky. Start to make really big circles, going one way and then the other, kind of like imagining that you're a rock star and you're like really getting it down on the uh, guitar solo. <laughs> Taking one more deep breath. Exhale, release your left hand down to the earth. Again, train tracks, not a balance beam. Press into both feet. Inhale, rise to high crescent lunge on the left side. Again, drag your left heel towards your right big toe. Inhale, grow nice and tall. Exhale, cactus and hover one time. Inhale, reach. And then this time, excuse me, sorry, reach forward with your body, so 45 degree tilt. Inhale, reach your arms up by your ears. Exhale, reach them out long back behind you. Inhale, reach. Exhale, extend. Inhale, reach your arms up by your ears. Again, think about the beginning of class where we're kind of hugging out, but also externally rotating here at the tops of the shoulders. So here for one more deep breath, start to shift your weight into your left foot, and then maybe walk your toes up, whoop, or maybe hover them off the ground, maybe two to three inches, or really even about hip height. Again, super tight core, so I'm not flaring here in the low back, but really trying to be nice and tight Stay here for one more deep breath. Super deep bend into the left knee. Reach your right toes out long. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, pivot your right heel down to the ground. Pivot on your left toes so that we're all pointing the same way. Exhale, fold forward. Whoo! <laughs> maybe grab a drink of water or maybe work into the shoulders a little bit more. Maybe making a fist behind your low back and reaching up maybe working a little bit more into the spine and clasping your hands behind your neck to add a little bit of traction. Or maybe just let your top half be nice and heavy, grabbing opposite elbows. Taking one more deep breath. And as you exhale, gently release your fingertips down towards the ground if you had lifted them. Inhale, lift your body halfway. Exhale, fold forward, and then walk your toes over towards your right foot so that we're facing the top of our mat. Frame that your right foot, step it back to meet your left downward facing dog. Mm. On your next inhale, glance between your hands. Exhale, walk or jump your toes to the top of the mat. <laughs> and then sit your booty down on the ground. Ah. Woo. Sweet. Grab some water. I definitely need it. <laughs> Talking and teaching, or teaching and practicing at the same time. Very interesting. <laughs> Sweet. So we've worked into the shoulders a lot, trying to kind of really find that action of lifting here and lifting even our shoulders by our ears so that we're here instead of like trying to flare out through the ribs and kind of working it more into a back bend, but trying to keep this shoulder mobility here. So since we've done a lot of work here and just like in our body, just in general, now we get to cool down and have some fun. So we'll come to laying down on our belly and if you are pregnant or maybe just don't, per, don't like laying down on your belly, that's totally fine. We can skip this one. Or if you kind of imagine that you might have a door frame 
in your home, if you imagine that this is it, we're trying to use the door frame as a place where we can kind of rest our shoulders so that we can stay seated or standing and then gently work backwards here with a bent elbow or extended elbow. I like to keep it a little bit more bent so that I'm a little bit more active either in my hand um, so that I'm kind of like holding onto a big avocado. Um, just being active here so that we're protecting the elbow and the shoulder in general. And if you feel comfortable laying down on your belly, we'll lay down and then open up our arms into a T shape and then rest our right ear down on the ground. Place your left hand underneath your left shoulder and then slowly roll onto your right outer hip. And if you feel really comfortable here, maybe place your left foot behind you, either maybe on a block, a blanket, or even just on the ground to really deepen the sensation. If you're like, ooh, I don't really feel anything, try making a 90 degree bend in your elbow, just like I talked about earlier at the door frame. So that we're here still gently gripping the ground, not again like a death grip, but just being a little bit more active. Rest your right ear down then that'll definitely increase the sensation that we feel. The stretches here for the front part of the shoulder, a little bit into the pecs, that's where you should feel it. Taking one more deep breath. As you exhale, gently come back towards center. Maybe wiggle the hips from side to side. Maybe stack the hands and kind of rest your cheek on your hands one way or the other. And when you're ready for the other side, we'll start off first by keeping our arms like a T so that my arm is coming directly out of my shoulder. I'm not reaching up in front and not really down behind as much. If this T shape is really intense for you, you can definitely bring your pinkies closer towards your hips so that we're more in that like kind of airplane shape that we were in before. But we don't necessarily want to be up above our shoulders just to make sure. So bring your right hand underneath your right shoulder, rest your left ear on the ground, and slowly roll onto that outer hip. Again, maybe to deepen the sensation, we can place the right foot either on a block or a blanket or even on the ground behind us. Or if you're like, girl, I really don't feel anything, make a 90 degree bend in your elbow, again, with your elbow coming straight out of your shoulder. Rest your left ear, and then find that same kind of shape. Taking one more deep breath. As you exhale, start to come back gently towards center. Stack the opposite hand on top, kind of wiggle up the hips, resting your cheek on your hands. Start to slowly come back towards a tabletop shape. So however you would like to get there is totally fine. And we'll be here really briefly. So if you normally place the blanket underneath your uh, knees, you don't have to do that right now. And in fact, it'll potentially hinder um, a shape that we're about to make, just to let you know. On your next inhale, reach your left arm up towards the sky, growing tall in between your fingertips. And then thread your left hand through your right hand and your right knee, dropping your, the back of your left shoulder down to the ground and resting your left ear on the ground. If this is really uncomfortable, maybe place your blanket or towel underneath your shoulder and e or ear to make it a little bit more accessible. We can stay here or maybe whoop, walk our right hand out front towards the top of our mat or even maybe bind our right hand behind our back. So bringing the back of our right hand to our left outer hip and then rolling our shoulder onto our back. The two work completely different things, so think about what feels good in your body and what you might need or want. Release your right hand underneath your right shoulder and then slide your left leg out long back behind you so that it's almost like we're coming into this like left outer hip shape. It's almost like we're laying in bed. 
and then open up your right arm over towards the left side. You might come off your mat and that's totally fine until your right shoulder finds the earth and it can feel nice and supported there. Coming here into this twisted shape so that we're having a nice twist along the spine to really, whoop, there we go, I can center myself. And to really maybe feel a sensation in the outer part of the hip, maybe I'll bring my left hand to my right outer knee so that there's a slight kind of like added sensation to really deepen the feeling that I have. Taking one more deep breath. And as you exhale, you can go back through the way you came, coming back through that tabletop shape, or just meet there however feels comfortable for you. Totally great. We'll come back to that tabletop shape. And on your next inhale, reach your right arm up towards the sky, growing nice and tall in between your fingertips. Exhale, thread your right hand through your left hand and left knee, dropping the back of your right shoulder down to the ground, resting your right ear on the ground. Again, maybe placing a blanket or a pillow underneath your shoulder or your ear just to make it a little bit more sustainable in your body. And we can stay here or maybe we can walk the left hand forwards to really change up the feeling in our left shoulder or maybe even bind the left hand behind our back. So bringing the back of the left hand to your right outer hip and then rolling your shoulder onto your back. Again, completely different sensations. So play around with what feels good for you. Release your left hand underneath your left shoulder. Slide your right leg out long back behind you so that we're coming onto our right hip. And then roll your left arm over towards the left side, coming into that twist again on our back. Keep rolling until your left shoulder finds the earth, even if your left knee comes up, that's totally fine. Maybe add some sensation by bringing the, your right hand to your left outer knee. Taking one more deep breath. And as you exhale, gently release your knee and then just come back to center so that your belly is facing the sky and we're laying on our back. Knees point up towards the sky. It might feel really nice to just kind of lay here, maybe kind of windshield wiper your knees from side to side. Maybe bring the bottoms of your feet to touch, letting your knees open like a book or really anything that your body might be calling for, whether that's a shape, a movement, a posture, a pose, really anything. But if you are ready for Shavasana, our final shape, I'm just gonna sit up real fast. It might feel nice, especially if you have like um, an extra blanket or a towel to kind of roll it and to place underneath your knees. This helps alleviate some pressure in the low back so that it takes out that natural kind of scoop in the low back, letting ourselves lay flat on our backs. And if you don't have an extra blanket or a towel, but you maybe had some blocks, books, um, boxes, really anything, maybe place those underneath your heels or even underneath your calves so that your knees are slightly bent and your feet are slightly elevated. I like to place a blanket or a towel on top of my hips and torso so that it feels kind of like a little gentle hug and it just feels really nice and comforting. You can choose whatever feels good for you. And as you're starting to set up and get comfortable, start to, I'm going to stay seated for my Shavasana, but I really do recommend having a nice, good, long Shavasana. Gently find a place where you feel really supported by the earth beneath you. So that with each breath in that you take, you feel your back body pressing into the earth. And if you're still breathing that ujjayi breath, that with that slight constriction in the back of the throat, you can release it, put it off to the side and start to really breathe into your belly, into that low belly area.
your breath to soften. Allow your breath to really breathe into your body, into your vessel. Allow that feeling of energy to really continue to expand. And imagine that you could send this feeling, this really kind of light, tingling feeling almost, out across the world, into your community, into your family and friends. Start to add small movements into your fingertips and toes. Gently making those movements a little bit bigger. Maybe adding wrist and ankle circles. Rock your head from side to side. Maybe reach your arms up overhead and stretch like it's the first thing in the morning. Mm. And when you're ready, you can use the, your bottom arm and roll to one side, kind of use that bottom arm as a pillow as you gently cross your other arm on top, kind of like a blanket. And just take a moment to really breathe into your body and into your essence and your soul. Noticing how you feel now compared to earlier in the day. And not comparing in the sense of judgment as in good or bad, but really just noticing how your body feels and how you feel. When you're ready, you can slowly press up towards a seated position, trying to keep your eyes closed if possible, so that you can really stay here in this little cocoon of warmth and safety. Let out any air that might be in your belly. Just let it out through your mouth super forcefully at one time. <sighs> Take a deep breath in through your nose. Exhale really big. <sighs> Deeper breath in. Even bigger exhale. <sighs> Deepest breath all day. Really let it out. Be forceful and emotional and just let yourself go. <sighs> Bring your hands to heart. Reaching your heart up towards your thumbs just a little bit. And we'll end and seal our practice with the sacred OM. Take a deep breath in. light in me honors, recognizes, and really truly appreciates the light within you. Namaste.
Thank you so much, friends. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, um, any feedback, any requests or anything like that for the future, please let me know either in the comments or you can send me a message here on Facebook. Um, yeah, and I just really love teaching and really being able to kind of be a part of this community with you. So I really appreciate you letting me in and um, yeah, stay healthy, stay safe. And thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Thursday. <laughs> <laughs>